The billionaire space race has entered a new phase. Jeff Bezos' new Glenn has finally achieved what it should have done a long time ago. However, the failure in the rocket's first landing is undeniable. Why and how? Let's find out in today's episode. After numerous delays, in the early hours of January 16th, the seven reusable B for engines of new Glenn roared to life, propelling the NG-1 into space. The second stage and payload successfully reached orbit, achieving the primary mission objective for Blue Origin. This milestone was a fundamental goal that Blue Origin executives had to accomplish, especially given the extensive development and production timeline of New Glenn. Nonetheless, it marks a resounding triumph for Blue Origin after a decade of effort. Arian Cornell, Blue Origin's Vice President of Orbital Systems, expressed her pride, saying, Getting to orbit is hard. There are not many countries or companies that have been to orbit. And y'all, we did it on our first go. Congratulations, that is huge. We did it orbital. It was a great night for Team Blue. On to spring and trying again on the landing, said Dave Limp, CEO of Blue Origin, in a post on X. The launch garnered attention from Jeff Bezos' rival, Elon Musk, who not only wished new Glenn good luck before liftoff, but also warmly congratulated Blue Origin on their success afterward. Congratulations on reaching orbit on the first attempt, Musk said. Bezos graciously responded with a message of thanks, indicating his satisfaction with this achievement. This first flight success was met with widespread acclaim from the space community across social media, as many eagerly awaited New Glenn's debut, despite a week of repeated delays. New Glenn is designed for partial reusability. While Blue Origin attempted to recover the booster stage on an ocean platform, the effort was unsuccessful. The booster's engines reignited to slow its descent as it approached the ship stationed a few hundred miles out in the Atlantic, but the booster was ultimately lost. Blue Origin confirmed that the booster was lost during the landing attempt. Second stage engine cutoff confirmed. New Glenn's second stage and payload are now in orbit. Another burn coming up? As for the cause of the failure, Blue Origin has yet to provide a direct explanation. The live stream of the landing was cut off during the descent, leaving the specifics unclear. However, based on the launch process and the engine's performance, there are notable points. Telemetry and visual data from the entry burn phase suggest a possible B for engine anomaly. Several key indicators pointed to serious propulsion issues during the critical deceleration phase. Notably, the entry burn duration was approximately 15 seconds shorter than planned, and the observed deceleration effect was markedly reduced. Additionally, the engine plume exhibited characteristics consistent with fuel-rich combustion rather than maintaining the designed oxygen-rich mixture ratio typical of nominal B for operation. New Glenn's architecture features a liquid oxygen, LOX, tank positioned at the bottom of the booster, similar to SpaceX's super heavy design. During the aggressive maneuver required for entry burn orientation, this configuration may have induced propellant slosh. The animation of the maneuver showed an unusually dramatic and perhaps unrealistic flip maneuver prior to the entry burn initiation. The resulting propellant movement, particularly affecting the oxygen supply, likely led to a cascade of failure events. The suspected oxygen starvation would have severely impacted turbopump performance, potentially leading to cavitation and catastrophic pump failure. The engine behavior observed aligns with this failure mode hypothesis. However, this remains speculation until Blue Origin releases more footage from the drone to evaluate how close the new Glenn booster came to its designated landing target. In the meantime, there are several potential reasons for this failure. One possible cause might be an issue related to the rocket's propulsion during the landing phase. Engine performance must be precisely controlled during the landing burn, with any irregularities in thrust, fuel flow, or propellant management potentially leading to landing failures. The landing burn requires exact timing and thrust levels to achieve the proper descent rate, and any deviation can result in either a hard landing or missing the intended landing zone entirely. Guidance, navigation, and control, GNC, systems form another critical component. These systems must work in perfect harmony to guide the rocket stage to its landing site. Any sensor failures, control system malfunctions, or navigation errors can compound throughout the descent phase. 
The rocket's computer systems need accurate, real-time data about position, orientation, and velocity to make split-second adjustments during the landing attempt. Hardware and mechanical systems must also function flawlessly during the intense conditions of re-entry and landing. Landing legs must deploy correctly, grid fins must maintain full mobility for steering, and all structural components must withstand the thermal and aerodynamic stresses of descent. Weather conditions could have been a factor, but prior to the launch, Blue Origin had reported that the weather status was green, making it clear that this was not the primary cause of the failure. So, what do you think could have led to Blue Origin's unsuccessful landing attempt? Let us know your thoughts in the comments and we'll discuss. Ultimately, landing a rocket remains one of the most challenging aspects, especially for a new vehicle like New Glenn. Even SpaceX required numerous failures to master the landing techniques. From the start, we really didn't place too much hope in Blue Origin achieving this milestone on the first attempt. Setting aside the failed booster landing, the debut of New Glenn signifies its entry into the realm of next-generation rockets, joining the ranks of SpaceX's Starship, ULA's Vulcan, and NASA's SLS. While SpaceX remains the leader in rocket reusability and heavy lift capability, it's evident that Blue Origin can stand as a serious competitor to Elon Musk's company. This flight is also a big step toward gaining certification from the Pentagon to carry out national security missions. In June, the Department of Defense selected Blue Origin alongside SpaceX and ULA, a joint venture between Lockheed Martin and Boeing, to conduct a new round of missions valued at about $5.5 billion. Before Blue Origin can take on any of those missions, New Glenn first needs to demonstrate that it can operate safely and reliably. The company aims to launch New Glenn up to eight times this year and has ambitious plans to send an uncrewed spacecraft called Blue Moon to the moon's surface in 2023. Blue Origin secured a $3.4 billion NASA contract to get astronauts on the moon's surface by the end of the decade. NASA also favors Blue Origin quite a bit. While SpaceX is seen as the primary launch provider for NASA and the military with its fleet of Falcon 9 rockets busy deploying Starlink communication satellites, NASA is counting on New Glenn, named after astronaut John Glenn, for critical missions. These missions include deploying two spacecraft into orbit around Mars. Additionally, Blue Origin has other customers lining up, including AST Space Mobile, Telesat, and Amazon, which plans to launch a massive orbital constellation similar to Starlink with over 3,200 satellites under the Project Kuiper initiative. This is a big deal because we're finding ourselves in an era where the demand for launches has not decreased. It's actually increased tremendously, said Mike French of the Space Policy Group. Founded 25 years ago, Blue Origin envisions a future of millions of people living and working in space for the benefit of Earth. Its mascot is a tortoise, a nod to the slow and steady fabled competitor that ultimately triumphs over the speedier hare a metaphor for SpaceX today. Although more than four years later than its anticipated launch, New Glenn has finally flown. For those keeping track, in 2015, Blue Origin did become the first company to successfully launch and land a rocket with New Shepard. This inaugural flight was designed to test a wealth of hardware, including the rocket's upper payload stage, which carried a 45,000 pounds payload demonstrator called the Blue Ring Pathfinder and a reusable first-stage booster. Of all the challenges tackled on the morning of January 16th, achieving a successful landing was the most difficult. We know landing the booster on the first try is ambitious, but you know what? We're going for it, said Arian Cornell, Blue Origins Vice President, during a launch webcast. You might even say we're a little crazy to try it on the first flight, but the data we get from flying the complete mission profile is incredibly valuable. Successful landings are also the most critical step toward real reusability, akin to what SpaceX has achieved with its rockets. Blue Origin designed its boosters to fly at least 25 times. Reusability is the future of launch. That's how you get to lower costs, said Clay Mowry, CEO of the American Institute of Aeronautics and a former Blue Origin executive. You don't fly an airplane and throw it away after one use, he added. I think New Glenn's going to be a hugely important event for the whole space industry. It brings a lot of capability to the heavy lift end of the marketplace.
At 7 meters, 23 feet wide, New Glenn's fairing is the most spacious available, doubling the volume of standard 5-meter rockets such as SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, ULA's Vulcan, and the now-retired Ariane 5, which launched NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, on December 25, 2021. When JWST was launched, it had to be folded origami-style inside Ariane 5, packed as tightly as possible to accommodate its delicate 21-meter sunshield when fully deployed. Teams spent days carefully guiding the telescope through a critical and complex deployment sequence involving 344 single points of failure. Larger rockets like New Glenn and SpaceX's Starship, currently in development, could eliminate the need for such extreme measures. Instead, cavernous payload fairings could ignite a different level of thinking about what might be possible from a space instrument perspective, said French, also a former NASA chief of staff. To the extent that we get so much out of SpaceX, it will always be constrained somewhat by launch. What can we fit? How big's the box? French added, There's such ingenuity, really just breakthroughs on the tech side, that allow us to have these breakthroughs on the scientific side. It's always so impressive to meet and talk to the people that live at that intersection. So, how could larger rockets impact future science missions? NASA has already included New Glenn and Starship in its plans for the Habitable Worlds Observatory, a flagship telescope designed to search for signs of alien life on temperate, Earth-sized exoplanets orbiting sun-like stars. Similarly, NASA's Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorers, Escapade, a pair of spacecraft set to orbit Mars, is slated to launch aboard New Glenn if its maiden flight occurs as scheduled in October. Of course, science missions aren't the only passengers on rockets of any size. The demand for orbital access for military payloads, national security assets, and commercial satellites for Earth observation or global communications far exceeds the needs of space scientists and their limited budgets. In reality, rockets like New Glenn are likely to see their customer base dominated by companies building massive satellite constellations like Starlink, Project Kuiper, OneWeb, and Telesat. The reason is simple. Building these constellations requires launching numerous satellites, and larger payload spaces mean fewer launches and reduce costs. Moreover, these satellites are not designed for long lifespans. As noted by experts, maintaining such constellations requires constant hardware refreshes in orbit, driving a high launch cadence. If you think of the market as a pyramid, the large commercial constellations form the base, creating the demand, they explained. While the maximum number of constellations that can safely coexist in orbit remains an open question, this demand creates room for less conventional and innovative applications, projects yet to be imagined for the future. What an extraordinary week it has been, marked by two monumental launches from the giants of the U.S. space industry. Blue Origin's New Glenn and SpaceX's Starship Flight 7 launched just hours apart from each other. These two groundbreaking events have ignited spirited discussions in the space community. For space enthusiasts, these launches represent victories for both companies, contributing to the collective progress of the industry. However, others seem to think that Blue Origin's new Glenn debut was more successful than SpaceX's Starship Flight 7. So how should we objectively assess this perspective? And how did leaders like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos react to these events? Rocket science has always been an exceedingly iterative process, one in which numerous launches have to occur before engineers get everything right. During the early days of NASA, nearly half the Atlas boosters that lofted the Mercury astronauts to space experienced failure. The history of space exploration is filled with challenges, failures, and triumphs. Test flights often fail before rockets are deemed safe to carry humans. The Titan missiles, which launched the two-man Gemini missions, practically shook themselves to pieces during their initial uncrewed flights. Even the celebrated Saturn V rocket, which carried astronauts to the moon, faced setbacks. NASA's Director of Flight Operations, Chris Kraft, referred to Saturn V's final uncrewed flight as a disaster after it nearly crash-landed in the ocean. However, the Atlas, Titan, and Saturn rockets eventually succeeded. Spaceflight history suggests that new rocket explosions often pave the way for future success, a pattern that is expected for SpaceX's Starship and Blue Origin's New Glenn, 
both of which recently faced similar outcomes during their test launches. On January 16th, Blue Origin conducted the maiden flight of its new Glenn rocket, successfully carrying a payload to orbit. While the upper stage delivered the payload as planned, the first stage, intended to land gently on a barge, instead plunged into the Atlantic. SpaceX's Starship also launched recently, aiming for ambitious goals. In a reversal of Blue Origin's experience, Starship's first stage was successfully recovered using the chopstick arms at its Texas Starbase, but the second stage suffered a dramatic explosion eight minutes into the flight. SpaceX euphemistically referred to this as a rapid, unscheduled disassembly. Both launches had their successes and setbacks, neither being definitively more successful than the other. Notably, both faced FAA investigations following the loss of their vehicles. SpaceX's Starship, significantly larger and more advanced than New Glenn, achieved its milestone maiden flight within five years, while New Glenn took over a decade to reach the same point. Some argue that Blue Origin's bold aim to achieve orbital insertion and rocket landing on its first flight justifies its first stage failure. However, others contend that Blue Origin should have achieved orbit much sooner, given its 25-year history. Comparisons to SpaceX highlight this disparity. SpaceX has routinely achieved orbit with its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets, launching with unmatched frequency and reliability. Jeff Bezos founder of Blue Origin, seemed visibly dissatisfied during New Glenn's maiden flight, watching intently with arms crossed. He later shared only visually appealing launch footage, avoiding acknowledgement of the first stage failure. In contrast, Elon Musk remains characteristically optimistic and focused on improvement after SpaceX's setbacks. These contrasting leadership styles reflect their company's differing trajectories. While Blue Origin has made a star with New Glenn, SpaceX's dominant position in the space industry, marked by high-frequency launches and innovative milestones, sets a challenging benchmark. Blue Origin's new Glenn, powered by 7B for engines burning methane, represents an ambitious effort. With a thrust of 3.8 million pounds, the rocket is a powerful contender in the heavy lift market, albeit less powerful than SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. Designed for reusability, New Glenn's boosters can endure up to 25 flights, reducing costs and supporting a range of missions. However, despite its engineering prowess, the company lags behind SpaceX in launch cadence and technological development. SpaceX, with its fly-fast, fail-fast, fly-again philosophy, has redefined the industry. Its Starship program continues to break records, receiving endorsements such as NASA's selection for the Artemis III mission. This iteration of Starship will play a pivotal role as a lunar lander, equivalent to the Apollo lunar module, highlighting its technological sophistication. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Falcon 9 remains a workhorse for ISS cargo and crew missions, but its relevance may decline with Starship's maturation. For Blue Origin, the challenge is not just technical but also competitive. New Glenn must establish its place in a market increasingly dominated by SpaceX. A competitive environment where both rockets operate regularly could drive the commercial launch market forward. This would solidify the U.S. as a global leader in space access, particularly as international alternatives face challenges. SpaceX and Blue Origin's ongoing efforts highlight the high-risk, high-reward nature of space exploration. Both companies are reshaping the industry pushing the boundaries of engineering and human ingenuity. SpaceX, with its aggressive timelines, and Blue Origin, with its deliberate approach, are driving innovation at an unprecedented pace. As rivals and pioneers, they are charting a bold path for humanity's expansion into space, from Earth to the moon and beyond. This marks an exciting era for space exploration, and the stakes have never been higher. As the story unfolds, we look forward to seeing how these two giants continue to transform the future of humanity's presence in space. Stay tuned for updates on this thrilling journey.